A pleasant afternoon to all of us here. We will be starting the program in a while. So for now, you may ready your things, such as your notebooks and pens for some note takings or your snacks and beverages for leisure or for yourself for surely a good uh, learning experience for all of us today. So again, welcome everyone and we'll be starting in a few. Thank you very much. All right, greetings of wellness, everybody. Welcome to the 2021 Professorial Chair Lecture Series. The first lecture in the series of talks will be presented today. And thank you very much for joining us and taking the time to have this learning opportunity with us. For the information of everyone, each Professorial Chair for Statistics has its own awardee, and we are honored to hear their lectures as a means of advancing the field. So yes, I know today will be a fruitful activity for all of us, so let's get to it. But first, here are a few reminders for the conduct of our lecture. Here are some guidelines, especially for the audience. 
Number one, the audience are requested to reserve their questions for the Q&A forum at the end of the presentation. Please refrain from interrupting the speakers while the presentations are ongoing. The audience are advised to only unmute themselves when asking questions during the Q&A forum or when acknowledged by the moderator. So kindly see to it po na we have ourselves on mute for the whole for the duration of the program especially during the presentation again to avoid unnecessary noise. The audience are also enjoined to use the raise hand feature of the Zoom uh, session to facilitate the Q&A forum in an orderly manner. The audience may also use the chat feature of, of Zoom to relay their questions. The audience may send their questions to everyone or privately to the moderator. So ako po yun. Uh, mahanap nyo lang po ako sa, sa chat feature po. You can send them privately to me. Uh, but whenever you're asking the question live or relaying it via the chat box, the audience are requested to use the following format when asking the questions. So first po, kindly state your name. Then state uh, the, the university or institution or agency you are affiliated with. Then followed by your question or your comments. Now, that can be heard also later. All right, so I hope those are clear and I know you are looking forward to it also. So let's start the lecture proper. It is with great pride that I present to you the 2021 awardee of the Philippine Statistical Association Incorporated or PISAI Professorial Chair for Statistics. We have Professor John D. Eustachio. He is an assistant professor of the, at the School of Statistics of the University of the Philippines. He is currently the Director for Facilities and Resource Management of the School of Statistics. He obtained his, both his bachelor's degree and master of science degree in statistics from the University of the Philippines School of Statistics. He will pursue his doctorate degree at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, starting this fall. He is a technical consultant for statistical projects of several international and local organizations for more than 10 years now. Most of his experience in statistical consulting are in the fields of computational statistics and handling big data, impact evaluation of policies and government or NGO-funded projects, and the delivery of surveys using computer-assisted personal interviews for customer satisfaction surveys. He has been involved in local and international fora and conferences in statistics where he was a paper presenter, discussant, or main facilitator. His research interests are not limited, but includes the following, computational statistics, biostatistics, and econometrics. He is also a member of several academic organizations, such as the International Statistical Institute, International Association for Statistical Computing, and the International Biometric Society. So let us all give a warm round of virtual applause and reactions to our PISAI Professorial Chair Awardee, Professor John D. Eustachio. Take it away, Sir John. Thank you. Okay. All right. And so, uh, since para wala masyadong noise, I've recorded yung uh, presentation ko for today. So, but we will have a live Q&A when time permits. Sorry, nag-clock siya at around a little around 50 minutes yung uh, entire presentation ko. So I'll just play. Apologies na and then may mga sounds ng manok dun sa recording. Okay, so I'll play. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to, uh, on my presentation for today. So. My uh, research is about understanding and exploring the fertility decision-making of Filipino women using count and multinomial response models. So basically, this research stems from uh, the previous research of several of my students. So originally, they, there are two uh, previous research uh, from two groups of students, uh, but they've used the uh, for, uh, NDHS 2013 data. So in this case, I'll be I'll use the 2017 NDHS data. So let's start first with a statement coming from the research of Gordon et al. in 2011. They stated that contraceptive use is of utmost importance in socioeconomic development, for it prevents not only mistimed and unwanted pregnancies, but also unmet fertility goals. 
So with this in mind, let's see what the current situation is in the Philippines. According to the 2017 Philippine National Demographic Health Survey, the mean ideal family size in the Philippines is 2.7 children for all women and 3 children for currently married women, whereas the total fertility rate in the country is at 2.7 children per woman. The Philippine Social Authority defines TFR as the average number of births a woman would have at the end of her reproductive years. In comparison to other countries, uh, the, our country's TFR lags behind Malaysia's TFR, which is at 2, and 2.31 for Indonesia. While Thailand has the second lowest TFR in the Southeast Asian region at 1.52, while Singapore has long outpaced all of its neighbors with 1.14 children per woman. So what is the problem with having a relatively high TFR compared to other countries? So uh, from previous research, family size has been consistently associated with poverty incidents as shown by household survey data over time. This is because among the poorest 20% of the women, over half do not use any method of family planning whatsoever, while less than a third use modern methods. A study by Orbeta in 2005 stated that the number of children ever born, or what we call CEV, is larger among poorer households whose demand for additional children is lower. Their poor contraceptive practice is the cause of large number of children in these poorer households rather than the higher demand for children. Moreover, poverty incidence was lower for families with fewer children, but rose consistently with the increase in the number of children. Aside from the link with poverty, the risk of illness and premature deaths for mother and child alike were known to increase when mothers, especially young mothers, had too many children that were spaced too closely. So with this in mind, it would be very useful to look at the fertility sensation making of Filipino families, particularly the women. So now, let's look at some of the existing literature about fertility decision making. So, according to Faisetan and Gasterline, family planning programs that promote contraceptive usage are heavily grounded on the demographic transition theory, which portrays fertility decline as a direct consequence of decreased ideal number of children. However, the relevance of this hypothesis should be further investigated, especially for developing countries. The complexity of understanding fertility preference and contraceptive behavior then calls for policies to consider more personal and social factors that examines women's position in her community, as stated by Casterline and Sinden in 2000. In the Philippines, there is a firm belief that it is not healthy to grow up alone without siblings and the prevailing notion of children being a support for the family's financial security. Furthermore, with the country's religious affiliation being largely Roman Catholic and Muslim, which majority would have a pro-life stance, may also be one of the possible reasons why the average household size stands at 4.4 persons according to the 2015 census of population. So accounting all of this, uh, while fertility preference can be a reasonable predictor of actual fertility behavior, a lot of economic and demographic factors can prevent this preference from translating into actual behavior. So instead of dealing with macroeconomic conditions which are not policy invariant and can be highly time varying, uh, the study uh, would like to explore the micro foundations that influences individual behavior such as religious affiliation and their family's decision-making behavior, even with the decision-making of their spouse. Furthermore, the research aims to understand how the odds of actualization of the Filipinas' ideal number of children increases or decreases in relation to the factors that were considered in the study. So now, let's go to the methodology. The data for this study is from the 2017 National Development and Health Survey, or NDHS, conducted by the Philippine Statistical Authority. 
So for the part where we are analyzing the women's ideal number of children, uh, the data consists of women aged 15 to 49, and only those currently in a union or living with a man are considered as part of the uh, observations. Uh, so we've analyzed it using Poisson regression models under two scenarios. So there will be two count models. First one is the uh, count for those women who have not achieved their ideal number of children. And the second model uh, is for those women who have achieved their ideal number of children. So what we want to see is if there is a difference between the factors uh, or even the magnitude of the effects, of the different uh, variables for these two scenarios, among for women who have not achieved their ideal number of children and for those who have achieved their ideal number of children. For the part of the analysis where the, we want to understand how the odds of actualization uh, differs for those scenarios na uh, they want more children, they're contented with their number of children, or ideally they would have, they uh, intended to have lesser number of children uh, in relation to the micro level factors, only the women which are above 36 years of age were considered. So why? Uh, we're imposing this restriction. The data restriction on age was made since there is a decline in fecundity as age increases. So the gradual decrease in fecundity usually starts at the age of 32 and rapidly decreases after the age of 37. So we want to make sure na that the women included in the study were likely to have a lower fertility and probability of conception due to the decrease in Egg quality. So, and less likely na, na they would add more children than uh, what they currently have. So, mas maging restrict natin yung numbers. So, for the respondent's desired number of children, which is our first dependent variable that was studied, uh, since it is a count variable, uh, the Poisson generalized linear model was used. So, just a bit of background for generalized linear model. Generalized linear models have three components. The first one is the random component, which is the response variable, which must come from a distribution belonging to the natural exponential family. And hence, we have the Poisson uh, distribution for our uh, dependent variable, and it belongs to the natural exponential family. So the second component is the systematic component. This is how you link the explanatory variables with your response variables. But uh, the linking between the systematic component and our random component uh, sometimes is not uh, perfect or cannot be directly uh, equated. That is why we have the third component, which is the link function. So this is the functional form uh, that the random component would take on so that they could be equated with the systematic component. So a function for the mean of the response variable that connects the random and the systematic component by specifying the functional form of the relationship between the response and explanatory variables. So for the Poisson uh, generalized linear regression model, we could see here na yun nga, uh, we are modeling the mean count that is a non-negative mean since it comes from a Poisson distribution, but our link function is uh, the log link. So we will take the ln of the mean count and that could be equated with our systematic component. So if you want to just have the mean on the right hand side of the equation, you will have this second equation. So the mean count is equal to the e or the exponentiated form of our systematic component. If the response variable is over dispersed in case of Poisson regression, even after accounting for all the explanatory variables, uh, the Poisson uh, maximum likelihood uh, standard errors may be wrong and the negative GM is more appropriate uh, for the case when there is over dispersion. For the second objective, which is to see the difference between the ideal and the actual number of children, uh, 
on an ordinal variable called child gap. So we've created the variable child gap wherein it's equal to zero if the actual number of children is less than the ideal number of children. So there is an unmet need. One, if the actual number of children is equal to the ideal number of children. And the second, the last one is coded as two, if the actual number of children is greater than the ideal number of children. So to account for ordinality, we are working here with cumulative probabilities. So as you could see, uh, this is just the uh, basic formula for uh, the cumulative probability in the discrete case. So the probability that y is less than or equal to some value j given uh, the values of our covariates or the excess is equal to uh, pi 1 or in our case we have the probability at y is equal to 0, probability that y is equal to uh, 1, and probability that y is equal to 2. The cumulative logic is then defined uh, with this uh, second equation. So it's just uh, we're tweaking uh, the equation coming from uh, logistic regression. Instead of the probability of success uh, inside the logit function, we have the cumulative probability. So technically, our success here is when the value of our y is less than or equal to j. So we will be using a proportional odds cumulative logit in this case. So the proportional odds cumulative logit model assumes that the way the explanatory variables are associated to being at a higher level compared to a lower level of the response category through the estimated coefficient is the same through all levels of the response. So what's the meaning of uh, this statement? We are saying that if we increase the value of x sub 1 by 1 unit, the effect with a change of odds going from category to 0 to category 1 is also the same as the effect of going from category 1 to category 2. So that is the proportional odds assumption. So in other words, this model uses cumulative probabilities up to a threshold, thereby making the whole range of ordinary categories binary at that threshold. Satisfying the proportional odds assumption indicates that the effect of parameters are invariant to the response variable cut points. These effects parameters remain the same across all categories of the response variables. As I've explained earlier, nga, the odds ratios will remain the same except from slight deviations that can be attributed to sampling variability. So this is a very large assumption that you would need to fulfill if you really want to use a proportional odds cumulative logic model. So since we will be using the proportional odds assumption, of course, we need to test uh, if it is safe to assume uh, proportional odds. So one method for testing if it is safe to use this assumption is to use the likelihood ratio test. So this is similar with any other likelihood ratio test. So you're comparing a simpler model versus a more complex model. You will get the maximum likelihood of the simple versus the uh, uh, more complex model, their uh, form, and then get the difference and multiply by 2, which is the usual case that we are doing when we are using a uh, likelihood ratio test. So what is the simpler and the more complex model in this case? So the simpler model is the one that assumes the proportional odds form, and the other uh, does not assume the proportional odds form. So in that case, it means that the effect of x sub 1 is different nga, for category 0 going to 1 and se uh, separate the effect of x sub 1 for category 1 going to category 2. So essentially, nag sa case natin, since we have three categories, nag-double yung uh, number of parameters that we have. Kasi nga, uh, you have separate parameters uh, for each uh, covariate for uh, first category going to the second and second going to the third category. So this test statistic asymptotically follows a chi-square distribution like you, uh, any other uh, likelihood ratio test 
with degrees of freedom equal to the difference in the number of estimated parameters by the two models. So, with uh, like other uh, likelihood ratio tests, the null hypothesis here is that the estimated coefficients are proportional across levels of the response variable. Kasi nga, we are dealing with simpler versus a more complex model. Uh, with, diba, with likelihood ratio tests, if the difference between a simpler and a more complex model is not that large, it means that it is safe to assume that you maghuhold yung simpler model. And what is our simpler model? The model that assumes the proportional odds form. Kaya, uh, nag-gubert itong ganitong test. A second version naman, or what we could use is, aside from the likelihood ratio, use a score test method. So, same lang din to with any other uh, score test methods gamit ng slope uh, to test if, uh, yun nga, significantly different lang yun ba yung uh, model na in natin na may proportional odds with the model na uh, we are not assuming uh, proportional odds. The test is commonly used as a confirmatory test. If it does not reject the null hypothesis because the score test tends to reject more than it should. Specifically, if there is a small sample size of the cell frequencies. So, yun din yung uh, problem with dealing with yun nga, categorical data. If you have too few uh, frequency counts for certain uh, set of categories, medyo, uh, yun nga, it would tend to reject more. So, usually, uh, you use more than one test. So, you use the likelihood ratio and then the score test to see if they would agree. So now, let's go with the discussion ng uh, ating count model, which is the uh, estimation naman for the uh, actual versus the ideal number of children. So the following model to be presented have a sufficiently good fit. So tinest na naman natin yung deviance over DF for this to see if there is a presence of overdispersion. Since there is a presence, there is no presence of overdispersion, it is sufficient to just use a Poisson log linear model and we did not uh, uh, do a negative binomial model. The exploratory variables in the final models were kept under the consideration of 10% level of significance. We're doing 10% level of significance since we are dealing with categorical variables so masyadong sensitive yung uh, p-values nila and having a 5% level of significance uh, would be very sensitive with the sample size nga nung uh, bawat isang uh, configuration na meron tayo. The model for the women who have not achieved their uh, fertility test preference yung uh, represent ko muna na table. So here's the table. Uh, I've just uh, divided sa dalawa since yun nga medyo mas uh, mahirap i-present since mahaba siya. So here you would see na we have the ancient years nung uh, women, uh, the type of residence nila wherein ang baseline dito is rural. So as you could see since this is less than 1 Yung, uh, ano na to, ah? uh, yung second column here is already the uh, exponentiated estimate. So, it refers to the multiplicative effect na agad sa isang Poisson uh, log linear model. So, as you could see, uh, yung multiplier mo less than 1 kung uh, nandun niya sa uh, urban since yung baseline natin is rural. So, you would see yung uh, setup na there's a tendency to have uh, a higher number of uh, a num higher number sa ideal number of children dun sa mga nasa rural instead of the urban. Ganun din uh, for Islamic affiliation, baseline dito uh, either uh, kung non-Muslim yung religion and you would see na almost 1.7 times yung ideal number of children nung may Islamic affiliation compared dun sa wala. In terms of uh, the education, we have two components. Yung education of the uh, female and yung education ng spouse niya. Yung husband niya. Depende dun sa setup kasi uh, 
we've accounted, hindi lang basta yung married women, even yung mga nakalibin partner. So, in this case, as you could see, uh, you know, pag no primary education, uh, 1.05. So, it means na yung no education up to primary education, yung highest level of education, tends to have a higher uh, number than sa ideal number of children. Ngayon, for the secondary education, and yung higher pa na education, as you could see, hindi siya significant. It means na almost the same yung ideal number of children ng mga nasa at least secondary or higher pa yung level of education. Pero in terms of the education of the husband, as you could see here, medyo similar yung effect sa case natin sa respondent. Na pag uh, elementary education or primary education or lower, uh, expected na mas mataas yung ideal number of children compared sa kapung secondary. Okay? Uh, ganun din yung case dito. Tapos, uh, we have C, yung number of pregnancy losses. So, mas uh, mataas, or habang tumataas yung number of pregnancy losses, there is also increase with the uh, ideal number of children. So, yung link na to, yun nga, uh, medyo kailangan pa siyang uh, i-analyze na baka naman uh, pabaliktad niya kasi or reverse causality yung uh, pwedeng present dito. Ngayon, uh, we have here the age in years of first cohabitation with husband. So, as you could see, ayan, yung multiplier natin is less than 1. Pero significant pa rin siya although close sa 1 nito kasi nga, we are dealing with age. So, ba baka yung effect talaga ng age uh, in cohabitation is malaking increments talaga kung talagang uh, extreme na sobrang bata or medyo matanda na yung uh, age ng first cohabitation. Baka doon talaga mas nakikita yung uh, effect. So, yun nga. Uh, as you could see, habang tumataas yung years in, fir in first cohabitation sa husband, mas uh, lumiliit yung uh, uh, ideal number of children since less than 1 nga yung ating multiplier. Ngayon, uh, yung consensus ideal number of children, ano lang to? Uh, either they both want the same number of children or magkaiba yung gusto nila. So, may kita nyo, ang baseline here, they want the same. Kung magkaiba yung gusto nila, may tendency na lower yung number of children na meron sila. Tapos uh, dito, uh, kasi they've uh, we've tried to add then yung mga uh, decision making. Uh, may score. Sa NDHS kasi merong parang uh, score uh, for decision making na parang nakachunk na yung uh, iba't ibang questions. Pero nag-fail siya na maging significant dun sa ating case. That is why uh, here we've just used yung uh, tatlong, uh, ay sorry, dalawa dito na scenario about decision making na nakita namin na nag-significant. Uh, and yung last, ayan, check emails or surf the internet at least once a week. So, pag not at least once a week, yung ano, yun yung baseline natin. So, may kita natin yung effect. So, just to reiterate yung what's coming from the table, for every 10 years added to the age, the mean ideal number of children increases by 11%. Islamic affiliation, on the other hand, has the most effect on women's ideal number of children, constituting to up to 72.48% increase if uh, Muslim yung uh, woman compared sa non-Muslims. If the woman is from an urban area where there are more education and employment opportunities than in rural areas, which is naman talaga yung reality, the mean ideal number of children decreases by 7.85%. In this study, yung ARMM has the largest desired family size, up to at least 5 children, suggesting that the large positive and significant effect of Islamic affiliation uh, to the preferred number of children can also be inflated uh, because of yung uh, regional na effect talaga. Although yun nga, uh, mostly naman ang nasa ARM nga ay may Muslim affiliation. Pero pwede rin kasing yung area na yun, uh, talagang sila yung 
uh, may gusto or uh, karamihan ng families gusto na marami silang anak. So yun nga, looking further, coming from the table, nandun na sa second one, looking at the effect of the women's experience on child mortality, her mean ideal number of children has a slight increase of 3.6% if she has lost pregnancy. So yun, it is important to note, however, that the child mortality rate is highly associated with rural settings. Pero check naman natin uh, if there is a uh, parang uh, multicoloniality between uh, yun nga, yung rural urban and this uh, experiencing mortality. Uh, hindi naman ganun yung case. Pero yun nga, pwede keep in mind yung itong scenario natin na most uh, setups naman mas pataas ang mortality rate sa mga rural areas kesa sa urban areas. It can also be seen that the both the educational attainment of the respondent and her husband have a positive effect on the average desired number of children when their highest level attained is either primary or higher education as compared to if their highest educational attainment were high school. In other words, no matter what the combination of the couple's highest educational attainment, as long as they are from either primary or higher education, women would tend to want more children than they have now. In the case for those who have desired children, uh, who is not achieved. Since yun nga, yung setup na rin muna. Yung model for those women na hindi na-achieve yung ideal number of children nila. Interestingly, unlike other studies which already consider educational level irrelevant due to the hypothesis of many women with lower levels of education also live in rural, in urban areas and consequently are learning the norms and ways of those educated women around them, the case in the Philippines is different. Kasi nga, after accounting for yung rural and urban, may significant effect pa rin yung educational attainment. Majority, which is around 70% of women who have not achieved their fertility preference, uh, sorry, and their, who have not achieved their fertility preference and whose highest level of education is at most primary education, still actually live in rural areas. Further, analyzing the results, a woman who starts living with her husband at an age of five years older than another woman or the average na case, is to have an estimated mean ideal number of children of 5.1% less than that of the uh, yung average uh, age yan ng isang woman. It was found that the decision with regards to family visits ay yun nga, significant. That is, there is a decrease of 5.62% in the woman's mean number of children decide if her husband is the one who chooses when she can visit her family. So, makikita nyo yung uh, setup dito. As for the remaining significant factors, the disagreement between the wife and the husband's ideal family, family size has a negative effect on the wife's ideal number with a 3.06% decrease. In other words, if there is no cons consensus found between the couple, it is more likely that the wife would want less children. Lastly, whether the woman has recently discussed family planning with her friends and neighbors and if she checks her email or surfs the internet at least once a week, uh, decreases the mean desired number of children by 2.82% and 3.92% respectively. So now we go to the model naman for the ideal number of children uh, for those who have achieved their ideal number of children sa case nila. So, yun nga, we still have the aging years, the type of residence, yung education ng respondent ng husband, age in years of first cohabitation, yung Islamic affiliation, discuss family planning uh, with husband, with neighbors, that checks emails. May kita nyo, yung malaking difference dito, ang nawala is yung uh, urban-rural. So yun, yun nawala, yung urban-rural, pati, uh, pati yung, uh, yung consensus ng ideal number of children between uh, husband and wife. 
So, sila yung mga hindi naging significant dun sa case nung uh, women who have achieved the ideal number of children. So, for every 10 years of 10 years added to the age nung uh, isang babae, the mean ideal number of children has a higher uh, increase sa case na to compared dun sa model na who have it achieved. Kasi ang increase dito ay 27.3%. So, in terms of test labing affiliation, malaki talaga yung effect niya. Ayan, mahita nyo, 42.21% yung may increase. Uh, and then, in terms of uva, urban areas, ayan, there's a decrease of 6.47%. So, as compared to the previous model where all four educational attainment variables for the man and woman were positive, dito ang nag-change, although na-account naman on both, uh, ayan, uh, these models indicators for the highest attainment being higher than the baseline are negatively associated with the mean ideal number. So, dito nagpapalit na yung form niya uh, kung na-achieve nila yung ideal number of children nila. Yung educational attainment nakabawas pa dun sa mean ideal number. Unlike doon sa uh, those who haven't achieved their ideal number of children, medyo mas tumataas pa. The cases where the respondent and her husband Highest educational attainment are both primarily have clearly the same significant positive effects of around 7% on the mean. The effects if either of them have an educational attainment higher than high school are not significant and have negative effects of 2.43% and 0.92% decrease in the mean ideal number of children. This implies that if both the wife and the husband have higher education and can lead to a further decrease in the women's ideal uh, family size. This is contrary to the previous scenario for women whose fertility preference is not achieved, wherein both having higher education leads to 2% increase. So, may kita nyo yung uh, setup dito. Uh, Magkaiba yung scenario no uh, naka-achieve ng ideal number of children with those who haven't in terms of the dynamics with the level of education. For this scenario, Becker and Lewis argued that even though the couple with higher education can, can afford to want many children, this may no longer be the case for couples who want to provide their children with a higher quality of living. So, uh, some other results para nga doon sa naka-achieve ng ideal number of children. As for the rest of the significant variables, a woman that is only a year older compared to another woman when she first lived in or nakipagkohabit niya with her partner was at, has estimated a 3.09 decrease in the expected ideal number of children. Whether the woman has recently discussed family planning with her friends and neighbors now has a larger and positive effect of a 5.01 increase in the mean ideal number of children. Uh, the version of this question where she instead discussed it with her husband is now much closer to being significant compared to the previous model where hardly halos uh, close to one yung multiplier natin. Its positive effect is also higher than when a woman recently discussed family planning instead with a neighbor with a 7.09 increase in the mean ideal number. It is interesting to note then that even if the proportion of women who have discussed family planning is almost the same for both groups of women, yung naka-achieve and those who haven't achieved uh, their ideal number of children, the effect of these family planning awareness variables are much more significant for those women who have achieved their fertility preference. Pero uh, intuitive naman yung case na to kasi nga, they're, nandito sila sa border or yun na talaga yung ideal number nila ng children or pwedeng lumakpas pa sila that is why, or that is why kaya uh, mas naging aggressive usually with family uh, planning uh, practices. However, while more family planning related variables are significant in this scenario, their effects are rather contrary to what is expected. Last, if the respondent checks her email or searches the internet once a week, it's still significant except now with a larger negative effect. Na kung nag-check ng emails, mas techy sort of yung scenario, uh, there is a 9.58% decrease in the mean ideal number of children. So now, uh, 
uh, yun nga yung setup na tinikdan uh, paano or yung dynamics with the ideal number of children na women. Uh, and then nga, tinignan yun with the two models for those who have achieved or haven't achieved. So, kung may unmet needs pa or wala na. Pero dito, uh, what is of interest is tignan yung dynamics between uh, these three scenarios. Yun nga, uh, may unmet needs, sacking needs, or sumobra. Uh, in this case, hindi yung number of ideal children yung tinitingnan natin kung hindi yung uh, comparison na ano actual with the ideal. So, yun nga, ito yung distribution for our uh, those na may unmet, exactly same yung actual and ideal or sumobra. 114, 184, and 372. So, 17%, 7.5, and 55.5% uh, yung uh, setup natin. So, yan. Uh, just to see uh, yung scenario ng actual number of children or average uh, number of children ever born, pati ideal number of children para dun sa categories 0, 1, and 2. So, we have here yung mean. So, the difference between the actual fertility and the ideal number of children with regards to the child gap categories is shown in the table niya. The estimated average of total children ever born belong in the lower or equal actual fertilities are relatively uh, similar or medyo malapit although 2.5 2.7 pero hindi pa rin malaki yung jump nila uh, they're still near the average of mas malapit dun sa halos sa 3 kaysa sa uh, 2 okay and Yun niya, uh, in terms of magnitude, well, the estimated average for the same variable in the higher actual fertility is around uh, 7, or sorry, is around uh, yun niya, 5 children. Meanwhile, an estimated average of around 5 for the ideal number of children is extracted from the group of respondents with lower actual fertility and around child 3 para naman sa groups with equal and higher actual uh, fertilities. So, yun, uh, we're now in the modeling phase with exploring yung variable nga na child gap. So, we just use a usual na stepwise procedure at 5% level of significance. And the result showed yung mga significant factors in determining the gap between actual fertility and the ideal number of ch children among Filipino women. So, the results indicate that as the husband's ideal number of children reaches or exceeds the women's ideal number, being a Catholic, or and whether a woman experienced emotional abuse or have tried delaying or avoiding pregnancy. Lahat ito ay highly associated with increase or decrease in the odds that a woman is leaning towards the uh, not attaining yung ideal number of children niya or exceeding pa yung ideal number of children. Meanwhile, as the woman's wealth index and age at first cohabitation increases, or when a woman's last pregnancy is watered, the odds of leaning towards the direction of exceedingly rather than not attaining the ideal number of children. So, we could see here yung setup. Ang negative kasi nga natin dito is yung wealth and yung wanted pregnancies. Remember, we are dealing with the community probability. So, probability that ang success natin dito, Y is less than or equal to J. Meaning, nandun tayo sa lower categories. Mas pupunta tayo sa 0 and sa 1 instead of 2. Which is, ano ba yung 0 natin? Yung there's a uh, lower number uh, nung actual children compared dun sa ideal number of children. 1 is uh, yung uh, actual is equal to the ideal. So, mas dun tayo na pupunta. Yun yung success natin. Failure natin would be nag exceed siya dun sa ideal. So, with this, yun nga, Mas napupunta tayo sa success, nandun tayo sa lower, if nandun tayo sa mga uh, signs na positive. Mas napupunta tayo dun sa failure kung nandun tayo sa sign or pag tumataas yung values ng sign na negative. Yun nga yung reason why we are claiming na yun nga, yung wealth index and age as at first cohabitation uh, increases or when a woman's last pregnancy is wanted, uh, yun nga, mas nag-lean tayo uh, towards uh, 
exceeding rather than uh, attaining yung ideal number of children. Yung mga positive naman, sila yung mas naglilin towards sa uh, uh, having fewer than the actual ideal number of children ng women yung mate. Ganun yung nagiging case. So, there's a spectrum of yung one, yung perfect talaga kasi yung actually is equal to the ideal. Kung positive, mas napupunta tayo sa zeros. Tapos, kung negative, mas napupunta tayo dun sa two. Ganun yung uh, set up dito. So, yan. Uh, I've already shown here yung uh, exponentiated form ng mga coefficients para we could see the multiplier dun sa odds nga yeah, of uh, having fewer. Yun yung sa case natin. So, yan. May kita nyo, malaki yung chance na, yan. The results show that an increase in the husband's ideal number of children, being a Catholic, whether or one of the tried to lead, avoid pregnant, or whether or one experience of abuse, mas sila nga yun naka-associate dun sa mataas. And the estimated odds of leaning towards exceeding the ideal number of children rather than not attaining the ideal number of children for Catholic women is 2.2 times compared to non-Catholics, holding all other family factors constant. More specifically, the estimated probability of not meeting the ideal number of children for Catholic women is 10.8 percentage points lower compared to non-Catholic women. In addition, the estimated probability of actualization of desired fertility for Catholic women is roughly 4.8 percentage points lower compared to non-Catholic women. Lastly, the estimated probability of exceeding desired fertility for Catholic women are 15.6% percentage points higher compared to non-Catholic women. So, yun nga, uh, I use nandito kasi yung mga coefficients multiplier for the odds. But you could also generate or compute yung uh, mismong percentage points in terms of probability gano'ng kalaki naging increase or uh, decrease. Which is ito nga yung nasa case natin dito. As you could see, kung nag-try na i-avoid yung pregnancy, ganito yung may case going from 0, 1, and 2. Yung nga yung sinabi ko kanina. Decrease ng uh, or lower ng 9.3 percentage points. Tapos, we have here 4.1 percentage point decrease. Tapos, yung last is yun nga, higher by 13.4 percentage points. So, aside din sa odds that we've computed for uh, kung na-experience ng emotional abuse, we have here yung marginal probabilities din for lower fertility, uh, actual, tapos, or lower, equal, tapos, take exceed. So, may kita nyo, uh, yan. For women who have experienced emotional abuse, the estimate probability of not meeting the desired number of children is 7.7 .7 percentage points lower compared to women who have not suffered from emotional abuse. So, but naging lower. In addition, the estimated probability of having the same number of children as desired for women who have suffered emotional abuse is about 3.4 percentage points lower than those who have not. So, yung mas, mga na-abuse, mas yun nga, napupunta sila dun sa nag exceed sila than uh, equal or lower yung narating. Since, there's a decrease uh, in uh, the marginal probability for these two categories. So, mas napupunta sila sa third category. And yun nga, if naka-experience emotional abuse, yun nga, mas naputulak sila towards the third category. Kasi nga, may 11.1 percentage points na increase sa uh, makupunta ito sa exceeds desired fertility kung naka-experience ng emotional abuse. So, this is just a different way of looking at uh, the effects instead of just having yung uh, the odds ratio. So, apologies, medyo na lengthen ko yung discussion about the results since medyo marami siya. Actually, nagpawas na ako. Uh, may specific results na lang pinakita uh, for this uh, presentation. So, here are some uh, conclusions and recommendations that next track 
coming from the uh, research. So distinct factor, factors found to be influencing ideal number of children of Filipino women who have not achieved their fertility preference include their experience with child mortality, whether the couple agrees on the ideal si family size or not, and the decision maker for visits to the family. In general, the ideal number of children of women with achieved fertility preference is more affected by her age, career priority, family planning awareness, and exposure to uh, internet. On the other hand, for the case of women with unmet fertility preference, her ideal number of children is mainly affected by her either meron siyang Islamic affiliation or wala, experience with child mortality, disagreement with her husband and family size, and experiencing spousal violence. Or they're just, sorry, hindi pa experiencing. Uh, they're justifying spousal violence. Kasi ganun yung case na parang it is acceptable na uh, naka-experience ka ng violence because of some reasons. Instead of factors related to family planning, the ideal number of children for women of unmet fertility preference is decreased by undesirable factors that suggest lack of women's empowerment. Mas yun yung nagiging uh, or nakita dun sa setup na na hindi talaga yung contraceptive practices yung uh, naging factor more of yung dynamics or interplay with uh, the women's partner. It is suggested that for this set of women who have more urgent need of family planning, family planning program should promote projects that help women cope with the emotional impact of pregnancy losses kasi nga yun din yung pwede nakaka-effect and that help them hold the same sense of entitlement as their husband. So, mas kung gusto mo talagang uh, makapag-decide sila, mas kailangan talagang uh, i-empower uh, yung mga babae with the dynamics. Kasi nga, usually, parang yun yung nangyari, tumataas yung uh, actual number of children nila compared sa idea because of the pressure from their uh, partner. The actualization of the ideal number of children is not only affected by women's preference and location. In fact, it can be also attributed to the factors such as the husband's level of education and yun nga, yung uh, preference din with uh, nung uh, tatay, with the ideal number of children. Sila yung mga naka-influence ng gap. When the husband's preference on the ideal number of children is higher, there is a tendency for the actual fertility to exceed the desired fertility. However, men with higher, higher level of education tend to be more receptive to the ideal number of children set by women. So, yun din uh, yung isang nakikita na uh, issue dito. More of yung mas mataas yung level of education ng mga men. Sila yung mas uh, more of uh, may uh, interplay or may dynamics with women. Hindi yung sila lang yung nasusunod. Meanwhile, usage of contraception or any other method to delay or avoid pregnancy is more likely a sign that a woman's number of uh, children ever born exceeded her ideal number of children. Mas yun at syempre, uh, intuitive naman yung case na yun. Uh, Nag-exceed ka na nga, kayo ayaw mo nang mas dumami pa. So yun yung mas nakikita ang uh, reason uh, bakit gumagamit ng contraception. This suggests that couples only tried considering contraception or any other similar method once they have already exceeded their ideal number of children. Likewise, this may also indicate that women may have been more educated nowadays with contraceptive methods and use that knowledge to re reduce young actual fertility. In this case, uh, the government should extend its efforts to strengthen the dissemination of information regarding the universal access to full range of modern family planning methods such as medical considerations and necessary procedures for couples deciding to have children. So to conclude, the results from the study of the ideal number of children used alongside the additional insights provided by the examination of the contraceptive behavior of women whose fertility preference is not achieved can be used to better understand the current trends in fertility behavior of Filipino women. With these results, policymakers may be able to create fertility behavior-related policies from an individual behavior point of view and to implement family planning programs better tailored to meet the needs of the Filipino women, especially those who have unmet fertility preference who may need them the most. Okay, so thank you very much for listening to the uh, 
talk ko. And if you have any questions na kung di mo ma-discuss dito, you may email me dun niya sa nakasulat dito, jdustakyo at up.edu.ph. Alright, thank you so much, Sir John, for that insightful presentation. Uh, we surely picked a thing or two. Uh, surely learned a lot from your presentation. And to further our learning process, uh, we are now opening the question and answer forum uh, for our audience. So again, uh, some guidelines for our Q&A forum. Uh, you may ask your questions directly to Sir John uh, by raising your hand. Uh, and uh, wait for me to acknowledge you so that you may raise your question. Or you may also use our chat box feature so you can message to everyone or to me privately so that I can read it aloud. And uh, please state your name and affiliation before stating your question uh, or any comments. Now, those are also welcome. So let's go. Let's start the ball rolling. A anyone, do we have any questions to ask live or any questions through our chat box? Siguro yung mga manok kanina, may questions din sila, no? pero hindi natin saan naintindihan ni eh. Unless may gusto mag-translate doon, baka naman meron kaya. Eto, uh, meron, meron nag-chat. Uh, okay, pa-anonymous po. <laughs> may pa-anonymous po ng questions. Sige po. Uh, why did, yung question po niya, Sir John, why did you consider yung checking email or surfing the internet at least once a week as an explanatory variable po? Um, may side comment and then push that it is not that obvious to me that this would be related to a woman's desired uh, number of children. Okay. So maybe significant uh, kasi, variable. Sorry. Apo. Go po. Uh -huh. Actually, ano yan, uh, exploratory rin kasi siya in nature. Tinuloy ko na lang siya coming from dun sa nagawa ng mga previous students na mm -hmm. it's a proxy for being technolog technologically savvy. Kasi yung alternative nun, hindi ka nag-access sa uh, net ng uh, in a week, wala kang access at all. So, parang di ba usually naman, nag-access tayo at least once a week. Mm -hmm. So, mas yun yung parang inisip namin, proxy siya for uh -huh. access to technology. Alright. So, parang more of yung pagiging techie po nung, nung women. No? So, or, meron din po siya ang kinalaman po ba din sa access to information or ibang variable na po yun. More on the parang pagiging techie lang po. Actually, parang sama-sama na siya kasi mm. pwedeng indicator din yun dun sa uh, employment niya or mm -hmm. kung nag-work ba siya. Or, kasi ano, yun din yung problem with the NDHS diba, na survey. Limited ka lang dun sa women questionnaire. So yes. parang kung ano lang yung pwedeng makugot namin na question, yun din yung uh, binangko. Tapos kineri ko na lang kasi di naman nadagdagan yung questions na NDHS. Alright. Thanks, sir. Any other questions? Pwede po kayo magtanong ng live kung may gusto. I-clarify lang din. Or any comments? Or additional na parang, uy, I agree na ganyan. We have uh, from our previous study or from my experience, may, may ganito kami nakita. Welcome na welcome din po yun. So not necessarily questions naman po. Anyone? Or pwede rin po mag-message kung nahihiya. <laughs> Open po ang ating chat box. Ito po. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, though, Sir John, it was mentioned that the ideal number of children is 2.7. Uh, is this different from the desired number of children considered in the study? Because if so, po, what are the factors considered in that 2.7 ideal number of children? Uh, yung ideal kasi na nandun sa start, uh, in general na yun, parang galing na siya sa survey report ng NDHS na regardless, lahat ng babae, uh, 2.7 yung uh, ideal nila, tapos pag yung mga men, 3. So, mm -hmm. kaya ko lang na report yun and kaya ko rin gusto nga yung numbers kasi siya yung ano, uh, nasa standards din ng mga demographic surveys na nire-report ng iba't ibang countries. So, medyo standardized siya. Pero yung sa case na ginamit namin, yun din values na yun. So, yung ideal, pati yung desired sa case nila, same lang. I see po. All right. Ito, we have another uh, anonymous question. Uh, what is the next for this research? Na parang ano po yung moving forward, ano po yung plans? Any policy papers in mind daw po? Uh, actually, ngayon, currently, wala pa akong plans for that. Kasi nga, nag-start lang ako na 
sayang to, coming from 2013 na research, mm. uh, may dalawa na silang nag- students ko to na collaborative, ginawa namin yung dalawang paper. And then, uh, ngayon, yun nga, with the 2017 data, hindi ko pa siya natatap. Kaya yun yung reason na nag-start ako with this one. Pero in terms of yung mga next steps, uh, hindi ko pa siya, ano, more explore ka pa rin siya. Kasi nga, kumari, yung sa setup, di ba, nung ibang mga variables na nilagay ko, hindi ko pa talaga sila sure if talaga bang totoo yung implication nila. So, i-verify ko pa rin mm-hmm. with other literatures na maka may bago pa. I see. Parang, uh, parang part na rin po dito siguro yung pag-incorporate na in this pandemic setting, would there be would there be any changes? Especially na marami nga rin pong parang uh, issues na, nag, na parang nag-arise from, from this setting. Uh, yeah, ayun pati po. ano, uh, yeah. pati okay. ano eh, generally, by trends, bumababa naman kasi talaga yung ano natin, yung uh, PFR natin. Uh, hmm. next start yan ng mataas siya, more than 3. Tapos ngayon nga, nandiyan na siya sa 2.7 or 3, depende kung all women or married women yung tinitignan. So, in general, mas naging conscious na rin naman or talagang nare-restrict na nila dun sa ideal nila na number of children. Mm-hmm. Ay, may follow-up din po yung ating previous na nagtanong na uh, as a suggestion na rin po no, to have the comparison siguro later on po when we have the the time and the uh, feasibility of this uh, research the comparison daw po ng pre during and post pandemic data and meron siyang side question na di kaya tumaas yung TFR dahil sa pandemic so parang may ganung lingering question lang din siguro yeah although yun ya uh di natin siya malalaman kasi kung mm-hmm. mare dito ginagamit ko pang data 2017 Tapos yung census pa na ginagamit ko is 2015 pa na info. Kasi nga yung 2020, medyo may, may results na naman siya pero hindi pa talaga full-blown results yung 2020 census. So hopefully, uh, magkita natin yung effect by comparing itong 2017 with yung susunod na NDHS na survey. Yes po, looking forward nga po doon. Ayan, any other questions or suggestions, comments, na side comments na gusto po natin iparating. If ever naman po we have other questions na maisip, meron po tayong uh, nabigyan naman po sa atin yung available ni Sir John so you can uh, ask him for follow-up questions okay, or uh, any other clarifications. Are there anything else? Po? Ito po, uh, may nag-message po na uh, may nabanggit po kayo kanina na reverse causality. Uh, ano, ano po yun? Ano po yun? At uh, paano nyo po na make sure na hindi daw po siya nangyari? Ayun, yun yung hindi ko pa na-verify. Kaya isa din sa mga i-check ko. Kasi pwedeng hindi yung ideal na, hindi factor yung uh, pregnancy loss dun sa number ng ideal uh, children. Pwedeng pabaliktad. Pwedeng kung mataas yung ideal number niya, Tapos yun din yung case kasi na ano uh, they have met yun na yung need nila. So if it's sabihin, uh, either nag-exceed sila dun sa ideal number nila or equal sa ideal number na yun na variable. Baka kasi yun yung case. Mataas yung ideal number of children nila, mataas din yung actual number of children nila, kaya baka nagkakaroon na sila ng uh, mga loss yun yung hindi ko pa sure. Check ko pa rin doon sa data kung nag-align and syempre with the literature. Alright po. Pero meron po tayong procedure to to test it. Siguro nag, nagtanong din po itong participant natin na meron po ba available pong uh, parang statistical method no, to really test yung reverse causality po? Or ano po yung parang insights on how to start this or how to answer this question po? Actually, mas ano kasi ito eh, uh, hindi talaga statistical yung mm-hmm. side na magsasagot sa kanya. Mas maganda talaga na yung sa side ng expert. Kasi mm-hmm. we could do tests, pero di ba nga, never naman talaga natin ma-establish ng madali. Ngayon, meron na mga methods for causality, pero laging mm-hmm. correlation lang yung mm-hmm. meron tayo. So kaya ang hirap din mag-impose ng direction. More on uh, experts opinion talaga yung magta-drive ng sagot. Mm-hmm. Uh, ito po, siguro one of our last questions uh, Is gender a factor in having children? Very straightforward lang uh, is, gender having a fa- is gender a factor in having children? 
Actually, hindi ko sana may connect yan. Yun nga lang, wala kasing way para itali mo na itong babaeng to, ito yung mga anak dito, ito yung order. Para mm. baka makita mong puro babae mo na naging anak, tapos mm. kaya ang dami, tapos yun lalaki. Maganda rin siyang i-analyze. Yun nga lang, tingin ko hindi kaya nung current na public use file ng NDHS. Mm-hmm. Kailangan mo talagang manghingi ng specific na data set sa PSA na magmamatch ng maayos. Kasi mm-hmm. di ba may children data rin naman doon. Pero hindi siya naka matatama yung order rin. Alright. I, I agree nga po. Uh, this may be our last question. Uh, ano po yung insights niyo daw po on why there, there's a shift from Islamic affiliation in Model 1 to being a Catholic in the second model? Ah, yun. Actually, being, yung sa ideal number of children, trinay namin tatlong versions. Yung may Catholic, Muslim, tapos combined. Uh, pinaka naging nag-make sense siya talaga or malaki yung difference, ideal number, kapag uh, Muslim yung affiliation. Yung dun sa uh, actualization versus the ideal naman, uh, actually, pwede mong palitan yung Catholic no? Muslim. Meron din siyang uh, setup. Yun nga lang kasi nag-aagawan sila. Parang mas madaling i-treat yung bagay kung binary. Pero kung tutusin, pwede, pwede rin namang i-place doon yung Islamic. And then magkakaroon din siya ng uh, insights. Yun nga lang, uh, uh, pag-trinay namin both, uh, nagkakainan lang eh. So hindi namin siya maisama. Although yun nga, uh, for refinement pa rin naman yung uh, model na to. Baka sakali, try ko na... Uh, say dalawa silang binary variable isa for Islamic and isa for Catholic and see kung hmm. papasok ay see po and last na po siguro just to wrap up everything na rin din po with regards to your lecture uh, what are the specific uh, inferential statistical tools that were utilized in the study so just a means to wrap up everything na lang din po siguro as to have that lecture. Ano po yung parang main statistical uh, tools that were used in the study? So yun, uh, mainly lahat sila based talaga rin sa GLM. So we have the Poisson uh, regression models. Tapos we have the commutative uh, regression models. Then nandun din naman sa discussion and I could share din naman yung full na documentation. Pero syempre kung plan ko mapapublish, hindi ko pa siya mabibigay ng buo. Uh, nandun din yung mga tests uh, na mga pinandak para makita ng reliable naman yung model. Mm-hmm. Ayan. Thank you, Sir John, for again, for that informative discussion and answering of our questions. And thank you very much for our audience for your relevant questions. And I hope na-clarify na may nakuha tayo Uh, from them. And again, uh, yung email address ni Sir John is available. We can we can provide you with that. Na-present niya rin kanina. If there are any other clarifications or pahabol questions. All right. Uh, of course, we cannot end uh, this event without giving uh, honor and recognition uh, to our professorial chair awardee. So allow me to read and present to all of you the certificate of recognition. So University of the Philippines School of Statistics awards this 2021 Philippine Statistical Association Incorporated or PISAI Professorial Chair in Statistics to, prof- to Professor John D. Eustachio for the outstanding performance in teaching, intellectual productivity, and service to the university and the larger community. Signed by our Dean, Dr. Joseph Ryan G. Lanzangan. So congratulations again for your award and for presenting the, that insightful lecture to all of us. So let's just have a quick documentation or picture taking po. Uh, if we can turn our videos po, Sir Lance, Sir John, ayan, okay na po. To have uh, our awarding documented lang din po. So ready lang po tayo. Ma'am Zar, can we assist us po sa pag-take po ng picture? Hi po. All right. Po. Um, those who want to um, for the picture. Ayan. Hi po. Sing. One. Mm-hmm. Two. 
two, three. Another one po. One, two, three. I am. Thank you, Ma'am Zar. So now may we invite everyone naman po to join us in the picture taking so that we may document and remember this meaningful event. So kindly grace us with your beautiful faces. Yes, so pwede po tayo mag-ready. Hindi man agad-agad. So pwede po mag-comb ng hair, mag ice ng background and join us po in a few. We'll have our pictures taken po. So hindi naman namin po tayo ipopost. No? It's for, for the documentation lang din po. So Yes po. Uh, to answer the question na rin sa ating chat box, the, yes po, there will be a certificate of attendance. Uh, yung link po nun ay later i-present po natin. So for now, let's just uh, show our smiles, our widest smiles. And ready lang po tayo, Ma'am Zar, for the picture taking. Thank you. Ayan. Marami na ba tayo? Sige, on your cue, Ma'am Zar, if you're gonna take the picture na. Alright po, wala na po bang hahawal? Baka may hahawal pa po, po. Oo, sayang naman. Or kung hindi pa tayo mga pag... Sayang po, photo up. Mm -hmm. Kung hindi tayo <laughs> mga pag-on, let's have our reactions na lang, our virtual reactions. Isabay natin pag one, two, three, reacts. No, yan, ganyan. Ano ba yung main takeaway, main... Uh... Ayan, mukhang ano pa lang... Um... Mm -hmm. Nag-on pa lang. Nag-on. Ay, nang nag-prepare na nga. Correct. Mga participants. Mm -mm. Pwedeng-pwede naman yan. Let's wait. So, yung email address po ni Sir John, nakashare po sa ating chat box. You can check it if you have any other follow-up questions. Or baka may related research kayo or kahit yung methodology, di ba? We can siguro adapt or learn a thing dun po. So, ayan. So don't worry po, we'll have the link for the feedback form and certificate of attendance later. Ready po yan. Ngayon, let's just savor the moment. Let's remember this one. Let's have our pictures taken. Smiles po. Ready? Smile po tayo. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, another picture po. So, baka gusto nyo na rin kung isa ba yung reacts. So, one, two, three. Alright, thank you very much po. Alright, ayan. Maganda makita rin yung mga smiles ng ating mga participants. So thank you again. A big thank you for attending our professorial chair lecture and joining us in today's event. So we wish you well and that you and your loved ones be safe and healthy, uh, especially in these times. So we are hoping po to see you again in the next events of the school. So just check our official Facebook page po. Okay, so you can just check UP School of Statistics for the invitations, for the announcements, for the publicity uh, materials, not for the next events and what's coming next, and the offerings in School of Statistics uh, where we can learn from. So now we would also appreciate to hear your thoughts, your feedback, your evaluation of the event. So just kindly go to the link po presented, shared in the screen, yan po bit.ly. Uh, slash PC, that's 0818 po. So, hindi po yan letter O. So, PC 0818-feedback-cert. Okay, so just go to that link. You will see a feedback form and a certificate of attendance uh, details. Okay, so if, if you want to receive your certificate of participation, then kindly answer the same form in the given link and fill out the details. Make sure lang po to enter the correct details, your correct name, your correct email address. Uh, make sure you double check po natin so that you will receive your certificate immediately. Okay, so minsan po kasi namamali yung email na nalagay. So check po natin gmail.com. Minsan nawawala yung dots. So check po natin para ma-receive po natin agad yung ating um, certificate so again a big thanks to everyone happy dinner po and may the rest of your day be blessed thank you very much i-share lang po natin ang link para hindi po mawala nasa ating screen po ingat po tayo
Thank you.